You know, the beauty of uh, YouTube videos interactions is that uh, you actually learn a hell of a lot. Usually things you didn't think about and uh, suddenly you've got a lot of uh, other minds putting their thinking caps on and uh, raise a few questions which sometimes create quite a challenge. And one of my viewers had a question about this uh, lamp limiter or dim light dim lamp tester and that was since these switches all of them use a neon light a neon lamp um, to indicate when they're powered now these are mains level switches why don't these others switch on when I activate one of them now I'll show you on the uh, whiteboard exactly what he means. Because these neon lamps in here are really just a neon lamp with a series resistor on it, and when I power this thing up and I activate one of the lamps, the mains voltage that's at the output is also at the other end of all the other lamps that are switched off. The resistance that they pose is actually very, very low. So theoretically, the voltage that's on one side of that lamp is also on the other side of the lamp. So it's also on the other side, on the um, switchable side of the switch, and that one, and that one. So if this uh, neon lamp in here is connected to the switching side of that single pole, single throw switch, it should see the voltage, the mains voltage that's at the output, coming back through the lamp to that point. And because the other side is connected to the, the neutral, if you want to call it that, this neon lamp should actually glow. Now, it doesn't. I'll show you. Here we go. They're all off. I switch one on. I've got no load. And I switch on the power. And as you can see, we've got the full line voltage on there. Zero current. That lamp's on. That one's on because I powered it. This one's on limit mode because it stays on because I've actually had it stay on for both uh, conditions, but it's on limit mode and even on bypass, nothing happens as you can see. Now, if you look at the theory of this, depending on how this thing is wired internally, those lamps should actually glow because the only thing that's stopping them from glowing is the resistance of a, a cold resistance of these lamps, which is a bit strange. And yet it works, okay? This is really what I want to show you. It works. If I switch on two lamps, two of them work. If I switch that one off, the one that's activated lights up. The others stay completely, completely dark. They don't even glimmer. So, yeah. Um, let me show you on the whiteboard exactly what it is um, he was talking about. If you recall, this was the schematic... And what he's talking about is that thing over there. When one lamp is on and the others are off, why doesn't that little neon lamp inside there switch on? Well, I'm going to redraw this just with two lamps and we'll see what we're talking about. See, the point he raises makes a lot of sense. If you've got mains coming in here 230 volts it meets a switch then it meets a light bulb and it goes there to your output okay and we have another one here because we want to parallel them. Well, what happens when I close the switch? Okay, I've got my um, zero volts or my neutral, if you want to call it that out there. Call that neutral for now. If I close that switch, then what do I have here? That's the question. And we'll see why in a minute. What I have here is my mains coming in, 230, goes through there, through the switch, applies 230 to that lamp over there. The, end, the other side of the lamp goes through there, in there, and output, to the output. 
Now, if this is disconnected, if there's no load on here, there's no current flowing through there, so I equals zero. If I equals zero, then the voltage drop across this light bulb, which is a resistive load really, is zero. So I should have here 230. And if I have 230 here, I've got 230 there. And if I've got 230 there, well, I've got 230 here. Right? That would make sense, because these light bulbs with zero current have zero voltage drop. They're actually very low resistances. Something like, I believe for a 60 watt lamp, it'll be something like 24 ohms or whatever they, they tell you. So, here's the question. We have these light switches here. And these light switches are effectively, according to my understanding of it, they are really just a, from this point here, there's another connector. And I'm going to separate. This is number one. This is number two. I'm going to put number three down here. And this number three is usually connected to there. And what we believe is in here is a resistor and another little neon lamp. Okay? So that when this power comes through there, it applies power to that point at the same time as it does to that side of the lamp and it gives us a light bulb going on there. The lamp glows, okay? Because there is 230 volts at that point. But by the logic we've just applied previously, we've also got the same thing here. So that point there has connected to it also a resistor and a neon lamp, and it also goes to our neutral point. So according to the logic, that lamp should glow, and it doesn't when that switch is off. That does not glow. And that is the question. And you know what the answer is? I have no idea. There's, it makes no sense. This is a simple neon lamp. Neon lamps usually have a resistor in there. Probably, I would say, they try to get about 0.7 milliamps to flow through there. Usually, I think it's about 0.7 milliamps to flow through there. If you've got 0.7 milliamps, you've got to drop, you know, I don't know how many volts it is. Um, so you've probably got about a, you know, 150 to 270 kilo ohm resistor on there. The added resistance of that light bulb to the other source of 230 volts is practically nil. It's another 24 ohms or so. So that thing should glow, and it doesn't. And the answer is, I don't know. I have no idea why that works. The only explanation I can find is that internal to that switch, it's not wired the way I believed it was. Um, there may be a switching action as well. There must be a switching action as well. So effectively, this switch is a, 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 a double pole um, internally. I could break one of those apart and uh, look inside Quite honestly, I don't feel like doing that. If somebody wants to do it, please report back. But I just thought this would be a little uh, interesting puzzle for me as well to figure out something that I've always thought I understood, and yet I was obviously wrong. So I'd like to thank my viewer for bringing this up. And uh, as I said, whenever you get hit with uh, questions like that, especially very intelligent questions, you learn something new. Bye for now.